Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Incremental Health audiobook series. Chapter 8, The Hidden Area. In psychology, there's a model that is used for receiving feedback called the Johari Window. A good friend of mine, Paul Stott, who appeared on the very first Incremental Gains podcast, sent it to me. And what I found was really interesting. I've also used it in the Weekly Gains newsletter. The window is split into a quadrant. What the window represents is self-knowledge and what others know about you. So, for example, the arena section is what you know about yourself And others also know the same things about you. So family, friends, colleagues all know certain things about you. The idea being that this should be the biggest area. Which is a natural part of being a human. We share information, we tell people about us. The hidden area is our secrets. What we don't tell other people. This should naturally be quite small. We all have personal information that we decide who should know, who shouldn't know. It goes without saying that our husbands or wives would probably know this information, but maybe others don't. The reason I started Incremental Gains was through my experiences with Andy's Man Club, a suicide prevention group that I helped to facilitate for 18 months. Men from all different walks of life sit in a room and talk about their experiences with no judgment and no distractions, with no pressure to talk if they don't want to. An amazing and simple idea, but so effective. There are no trained professionals. It's all peer-to-peer support. Professionals have their place, definitely. But this was an informal group setting where men were just allowed to talk and listen without the stigma surrounding men's health. So incremental gains was about offering peer-to-peer support. If I describe my experiences, it may help others who are going through similar things. One of the most powerful takeaways for me with facilitating the group and participating in it as well for my own self-care is how powerful it can be to understand that you're not alone going through something. You are not the only one dealing with suicide, depression, anxiety, relationship troubles, whatever it may be, you're not on your own. Some men came once and never came back. Initially, I took this as a negative. I was blaming myself and asking for feedback on what we could do better, why why people weren't coming back. It was only after a good 12 months that I realised there was a pattern. On reflection, all some people really need, and I'm including women in this as well, is to understand that they're feeling emotions that they were going through. They weren't new. Other people are dealing with the same things. They weren't on their own. To hear someone else talk about the same issues that you're describing and you're going through, the same worries and the same concerns was all some people needed to hear. Throughout these chapters, I've shared some of my experiences. However, I've not shared them all. I've worried about this a little bit and I feel that it would be insincere and contradictory of me if I didn't discuss it. How can I expect people to work with me and trust me, working through and with incremental gains? if I'm not congruent, if my words are not in line with my actions. So we discussed very early on in this audiobook series about my own insecurities around my physique. I was a skinny kid. Looking back, there were proper insecurity issues growing up. It was definitely a motivation in me doing martial arts and it was also a motivation in me joining a gym. Now, body dysmorphia is something that we immediately think of with women. 
when we think of anorexia and other eating disorders. However, research has shown that this issue is increasing so much in young adult males due to popularity of reality TV, Instagram influencers. There's so much more pressure on men, particularly young men now, to conform to Hollywood stereotypes, reality TV shows, and the style of physiques that men are showing off on these on these shows. So around the age of 25, I started my first course in anabolic steroids. And on and off, for the next three to four years, I continued to take them. I'd done a lot of research. I knew that injecting was safer than taking it all orally. I also had to source some needles and also disposed of them safely and correctly, which meant going into the needle exchange clinic with other people who might be using this service for a different kind of drug. All of this I kept pretty well hidden, apart from a few close friends who were aware. Looking back, obviously people who know the signs and the fact that I was away for long periods of time and when I returned, I was noticeably bigger and heavier in just a few weeks. It would have been pretty obvious to those who have an interest in the gym or are around the gym environment what I was doing. But the confidence that I gained from it was enormous and I felt amazing. Now the negative side effects are not really understood. I can say now that I didn't experience any of the, the stereotypical roid rage that occurs in some people. But I definitely put a lot of muscle and size on. I went from roughly 82 kilograms to around 97, probably 107 at the heaviest. Now the mental health aspect was the worst to deal with. At the end of a cycle, because you can't set them consistently. You need to have cycles on and off. Your body needs to rebalance and start to produce its own testosterone. Which, by taking the steroids, your body stops producing the testosterone naturally because it's getting a synthetic version. However, once you stop, a lot of progress that you made halts. You lose size, you lose strength. Not immediately, but over time. You definitely do. So there is almost a withdrawal as you don't look as good in the mirror anymore. What your perception of yourself is in the mirror changes. Your clothes are a little baggier. Your strength has diminished in the gym. So your confidence is knocked. So then you're already planning your next cycle when you're going to start taking them again. And so it continues. Now, it's important to understand that even though I was more confident externally, I wasn't really happy because I could still see negatives. Skinny legs, any bigger traps, any bigger calves, and so on and so on. It got to the point where I couldn't see how I was ever going to stop the continuous cycles. So it wasn't ever really about the steroids. It was about accepting me for who I was and being happy with who I was. I mentioned it in a previous episode, the One Body, One Piece episode. I understood the role of genetics and I learned how to train properly and I learned how to, to correctly apply the nutritional aspect to gain weight. Body dysmorphia is still something I deal with to this day. However, I trust the process and I don't worry too much about the results. As long as I get the workout done, I'm interested in the process. Consistency is key. As I get older, I know the role that fitness, health and well-being has in my life. And it's not as superficial anymore as when I was in my early 20s. Ironically, when I actually understood how to train and eat correctly to add mass, 
that was when I went up from 97 to 107 kilograms. And I had been off steroids for several years by then. This was a precursor to me starting jujitsu. As I realized how inefficient and unfit I was at the heavier weight. Now, as I reach 40 years old, I'm much more accepting of, of my body image. My wife understands that training is part of my coping strategies and without it, my mental health would suffer. Knowing my body type and my genetics, I know that and I understand how my body works. I need to train to keep weight on, not lose it. Maybe there are still some issues that are underlying, underlying it, but I'm in a good place where I can stick to a routine and implement the structures that I used to cope. So I thought it was time to share that aspect with you. It's not easy to talk about, as apart from a few people, it was kept secret. But I think body dysmorphia amongst young males is an important topic to talk about, discuss and put out on the table. And we're probably all aware that anabolic steroids amongst young men is rife at the moment to keep up with this body image that we see on social media, that is put on reality TV, that is used in the movies. And unless you're genetically disposed to building that kind of muscle and gaining that kind of physique, it's not achievable. However, the bigger picture is to become happier and accept who you are. And until you start to accept who you are and be happy with who you're with, with all your perceived flaws, just being happy, attaining a better physique, attaining bigger bicep muscles, is ultimately not going to help. So start by asking yourself the question, what is it? What are the perceived benefits of going down that path? And ask yourself the question why you want to change who you are. Maybe it only comes with hindsight. Maybe it only comes with, with age and experience that as you get a little bit older, you understand. I thought that My confidence came from the fact that I was bigger, that I was stronger. I wanted to become popular, maybe, on some level. Become accepted in the tribe. But I think that it was just to become happier with being me. And ultimately, you, you learn as you get a bit older... that those superficial gains are not making you happy. You've got to be happy with who you are inside because your body's going to change as you get older anyway. Your early 20s, late 20s, your body's going to start to change once you hit 30 and you get a little bit older. You're going to have to change and adapt the way you train, the way you think about recovery. You're going to have to accept who you are and be happy with the person who you are. Otherwise, this could go down a very dark road with you never being able to accept and be happy with who you truly are. So I hope you've enjoyed listening to this episode. And we'll see you next time on Incremental Gains. Thank you for listening.